Hey, what's up gamers? It's Ryan six days a week and in this video we're going to be going over the mechanics behind blocking with the shield and some tips on how you can increase your blocking success rate. Even though it seems like a pretty straightforward concept, blocking in this game can be a frustrating experience if you don't know exactly how the hitboxes and mechanics behind it work. I did it! I can't block! I, I'm the party. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. I can't block! In Dark and Darker there are currently three types of offhand shields the heater shield, the round shield, and the buckler, that can be used to block all melee forms of damage as well as most projectile forms too. The info in this video covers those three shields as we'll be saving the pavis, the game's notable two-handed shield, for its own video as it has a fairly unique use case. So right now, you probably understand intuitively and from the loading screen tips that blocking is directional, but it does get a little more specific than just facing your attacking enemy. You can clearly see here all the exposed areas of your character in the guard pose, even when using the largest shield, the heater shield. Dark and Darker's hitboxes are fairly accurate to their model meshes too, as we notice from picking up small jewelry, and this doesn't change with shields. So a forward facing block leaves many angles vulnerable to attack. If you feel that you are timing your block correctly, but still receiving damage, there's a good chance that your opponent is reaching over the top or sides of your shield, even if your view completely obstructs them. Additionally. An attack is not interrupted until it intersects your shield, so protruding weapons, like the Falling Axe, can actually make contact with your character just before colliding with your shield, leading to both a connecting hit and a successful block within the same swing. The first step in countering this is to learn the animation moveset for each weapon type and tilt your shield in the angle that the attack is coming from, instead of just the direction of the attacking player. This will increase the likelihood that your attacker will strike only your shield. However, more experienced players may notice this mid-swing and can quickly change the course of their attack through crouching, rotating, jumping, or cycling animations. And since the defensive pose covers most of your vision, it often becomes a high-risk game of rock-paper-scissors. To improve your odds of winning the trade here, one strategy is to stuff your opponent and bring your shield's hitbox as close as you can to the attacker's weapon so they're unable to navigate around your shield. This works especially well when using the larger heater and round shields against swinging or slashing attacks as you can force a hilt to become the first point of contact and immediately trigger a block. You can see this strategy work here. As soon as I see the barbarian swing load up, I press my shield as close as I can to them. This interrupts their attack immediately at the hilt and allows me to capitalize on their attack reset. The downswing of the felling axe allows this method to have a near perfect success rate and can be pretty frustrating to fight against if you don't have a secondary weapon with a different attack set. The downside to this method is that it puts you in a vulnerable position to build with much higher mobility, attack speed, or impact power. The small size of the buckler will also make this strategy a little bit more difficult, but it does have the lowest movement speed penalty both when equipped and in the guarding pose as a trade-off. So repositioning yourself into a favorable position is easier, but the act of a full block becomes more difficult, especially against a ranged player. One last note on shields that isn't as related to blocking is that all shields provide a level of armor rating when actively equipped, so it's like having an extra piece of armor on. Here are the purple rarities shown with their effective physical damage reduction, assuming you are currently at 150 armor rating. Just remember to really pay attention to the movement penalty when deciding on your build and think on if shields really would fit your playstyle. There are a number of two-handed weapons that also have unique blocking mechanics and a much higher damage output, which we'll cover in another video. Honestly, you may not even need a weapon set with the ability to block if your build lets you evade attacks completely. Everyone has their own playstyle. As always, thanks for watching, and please feel free to leave a comment with any questions or critiques you have, or even ask me live on Twitch when I'm playing. I hope to see you in the dungeon soon.